So, the second part that we need to do is we want to start a new Blender file. So let's go into Blender, press General for a new um, project, delete the default cube, let's just delete the camera and the light as well. Now, what we want to do is we want to press Shift A, add a plane, scale it to make it like a road kind of, like this kind of shape. And now I'm going to add a road texture. You can create your own or have your own one if you want to use your other ones. I'm just going to use this one because this is one I have. So let's rotate this round. I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. Press control R. Split it down the middle. Delete this side by pressing X. Press tab. Actually, let's move it into the middle so it's centered properly. Press tab and now we can move this around and it's in the middle. Let's press shift D to duplicate. Bring it over. That looks quite good. But you can do it like this if you want, but it's quite slow. So I'm going to use an array. So modifier array. And let's just make it, I don't know, 12 car lengths wide. 12, I'm um, sorry, 12 planes long. That looks fine with me. I'm going to create the pavement now. So for this, we want to create a similar, um, similar kind of plane over here. So not as wide because footpaths aren't as wide. So like that wide. Come down to here. I'm going to add in a stone texture, I think. Um, cobblestone, is that it? Yeah, lovely. As you can see, this is quite a simple cobblestone texture. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get all of these. Okay, that looks quite decent size. Maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect. Put that there. And then just to make it look like it has a bit that goes down onto the road because footpaths are generally raised. Click on these two axes here. Press E to extrude it. Bring it down a bit. It's not very in focus, but you won't see it. So press E again and then bring it down. Perfect. And then bring this over so it overlaps. Bring it down a little bit. Perfect. Use an array like we did before, so add a modifier array. And then I think I'm going to do it on the y axis. Get rid of this one, so press 0. And then we'll do 18, I think, should match it. Clearly not. 22, maybe. 26, maybe. 30, come on. 31, 32, okay then, finally, <laughs> press shift D to duplicate, and then press S, X, and then minus 1 to invert it, so we can add it on the other side, bring it over, lovely, so now we've got this, the main part of the road done, to make this look better, I'm going to add some trees in, these trees you can get from Polygon, not Polygon, sorry, you can get from Sketchfab. I'll leave a link in the description. So here are the trees. And I'm going to use these buildings as well to make this look better so we've got a decent environment for the car to drive around in. So I'm going to use the um, Sketchfab um, importer thing. So if you press N on your keyboard and then activate the add-on, you, you have to download it from their website. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. So you can import a model via the uh, URL. So I'm going to copy it, paste it, and then import it. As you can see, the tree is in. Perfect. Let's scale it down a bit so it's a bit more true to scale. Bring it around. Press G and then Z on the keyboard to bring it up. That looks good with, looks good to me. G, Z and then just slightly submerge it. Perfect. Is that a little bit too small, maybe a little bit bigger? And then just a tiny bit. Yeah, that looks good. So you want to select the tree, make sure you got it selected, press shift D, then we'll bring it over to about there, on the other side, that looks pretty good to me, 
And now I'm going to select both these trees here to make this process a lot quicker. Press Shift D again. Bring it over to about there. Shift D again. Bring it over to about there. Shift D again, you get the idea. Now we've got a lot of trees. Let's bring in some scenery now. So like we did before, copy the link for the cities, the buildings, and then import them here. Press import model. It will be quite a large model, so I have to scale it down. So I don't know if this is going to crash or not. Perfect, it didn't. So always save your work regularly if you're doing this properly, just to make sure that you don't lose your progress. So I'm going to move this out of the way of the, what I'm doing, just so I can take the building separately. I'm going to delete the base plate because we don't need that. And then let's select some buildings. Let's take one of these um, lampposts as well. So shift D to duplicate. Bring it over here. R, Z, 90 degrees. Press G and let's move it over. About there. Looks fine to me. We'll do what we did with the trees as well for this. So shift D. Bring one over here. Shift D. Let's bring one over there. Okay, that should be fine. Let's bring in the buildings. First of all, I think I'll go with this building here. So I'm gonna go into the top view, press um, Shift D to duplicate, press G to bring it over. Let's just check which way around the building wants to be. So I'm guessing this is the front, so we'll bring it around this side. Is that to scale properly? Just a little bit bigger, maybe. Actually, I think that should be to scale. Actually, just a tiny bit larger. Bring it over. Uh, that looks pretty to scale to me. Just make sure it goes in there properly. That shit makes me noticeable from the camera view. Excellent. Now let's just move that over a little bit because it's quite close to the side. Out there. Alright. Let's get some more. I'm going to get these two nice looking buildings over here. Okay, that should be enough buildings for now. So now let's hop on to the shading and add in a decent lighting. For this, I think I'm gonna do, so press Control T for if you have Road Angler enabled. If not, just copy what I've got here. So let's add in a texture for the sky, which I'm gonna use a HDR for. I think I'm going to use a HDR of a, like an outdoor -y kind of area, which I can get from Polygon. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get that from. Um, and because it's not very good HDR for an actual background, it's only good for lighting. I'm gonna have to create a separate one, a separate image for the actual background. So duplicate the background node here by pressing Shift, Shift, <laughs> Shift D, press Control T again, and then select the other background you want to use, which may be just a plain picture of the sky, which is perfect for this kind of like this kind of animation so i'll get my one quickly um you can get both of these from polygon completely free so i'll leave a link in the description to that website which i probably already have mentioned a few times in the video so now if we go into render view as you can see it should have added in this light in perfect let's finish this off press shift a and find a mix uh, mix shader. Bring this in over here. Oops. Select the two like that. Shift A and then input light path. Find the camera ray. The top one. Is that camera ray? I think it was. Yeah, and then bring it down to this part here. So we go back out to layout. As you can see, we've got the nice sunny sky. Let's change our render settings. So go to cycles, 
It's made like quite badly. I'm gonna change mine to GPU because I have a quite a decent GPU. I'm gonna change light paths to 32 because I don't need loads of light paths right now. I'm gonna put denoise on because I want to see things like I probably will see them in the animation. So now I've got denoise on, that looks a bit better. For the end result, I think I'll render a 64 um, light paths, put motion blur on, and then let's change the resolution to 2560 by 1080, lovely. You might want to set a different render output for this one as the, a different one to the first one you used because this is two separate renders so you don't want to override the original images you rendered in the first one. So just change that to wherever you want to change it. I'm going to keep it the same because I've got the other one stored in a separate place when I rendered it. Let's just delete the excess buildings because we don't need those now. All right, so now you once you deleted all the excess stuff that you should have deleted like I just did, go back to the way you've built everything. As we can see, it's quite small, everything here. So I'm just going to scale it up a bit. So let's scale it up. Maybe a little bit more because it was it was quite small to begin with. So this is a bit better, a bit more realistic. And there's still some stuff around here. So let me just delete this. Let's do the fun part now. Let's add in our car. For this, you want to open up your previous file, so the Mercedes car that we had the first time. So here's the Mercedes car. Oops, delete that camera, not camera, sorry, the light. And now let's just put this car into the right position. Select all of the car, press Ctrl C, go back to our other Blender file, this one here, and then we'll just paste it. It should have pasted the car over here, lovely. Let's work out the scale. So if we go into this view here to see the materials, it may be quite laggy at first because this is a new car. Scale it down a bit. That looks fairly realistic to me. Maybe a little bit more. Bring it down onto the road properly. Excellent. So I'm going to make this the end of the road. So we're going to bring the car over here. I think I'll bring it onto this side of the road because why not? Bring it forward a little bit. And then let's bring the camera over here. So select the camera, bring it over here. Go to the camera view and then let's set this all up. If I remember correctly, it was minus 100 degrees for the camera angle in the first one. So let's set this all up. So to set it up properly, what you want to do is you want to open up the original file we had of the first car and then look at the camera on the last frame. So the car is roughly down the middle basically slightly to the left and the camera rotation was minus 100 degrees so let's set this up again for this camera in the second scene so minus 100 and then we want to make it at a 87 degrees on this axis and then it was 180 degrees there okay Let's line it all up now. Still think it was further away. Let's make this road a bit bigger. If we go onto the array over here, add one more onto it, and then that's good. Okay, that's fairly in sync, so let's keyframe all that. And now, uh, how many frames should we do this? So the original turn was 
140 to 130, so 30 frames to do that. So I'm going to say 60 frames and then we'll go minus 360. Keyframe that. So now we've got the turn. Turn in motion is good. And now let's go to the first frame. So the location is keyframed. And let's just make sure the car actually moves in sync with the video. So press I to keyframe location rotation of the car. You want to go back to frame 60 and then move it forward to about there, sorry. So now, as the camera moves around, the car also moves. Perfect. For the camera, let's make this more central after the, the, after the car goes. So move this over, move it upwards a little bit like that, and we'll move it forwards a little bit. So now we have a smoother camera action, so it goes in spirals. We can move it forward a bit more actually. Maybe it's like here. That, that car does move quite a long way, so let's just change that keyframe. Maybe, move, maybe about there. Not too far. Perfect. Let's just delete this thing that's in here, we don't need that. Delete this, and then delete the spring as well. Oops, I want the spring, lovely. We'll animate the wheels last because there's no point animating them now because it's just no point because we're going to keep on doing car movement. Let's add our second camera. So for the second camera, as you saw in the first video, I put it in a tree. So you can put it wherever you want, you can put it on a building, but I'm going to go with the tree shot again because I did like it. So let's add a marker, press M. Go to the first frame as well, so let's just bring this up a bit so you can see it. Press M again, click on the first camera, Control B, come back over to the second marker, go back to the camera in the tree, select that camera, if I can, it's so small the camera. <laughs> Let me select the camera. <laughs> Lovely. Control B down here. Now we got this camera, let's move it around so it fits our shot accordingly. So this is quite good. And then we'll go to frame. So frame 60 and we'll keyframe the location of the car. So the keyframe, okay. Frame 100, let's say. And then bring that over to about there, which is out of camera. Keyframe that. And I'll watch it back. As you can see, the car goes through. Perfect. So, now we want to make sure that the camera goes off from frame 100 to the next part. So, press M on your keyboard to press add marker. And then I'm going to put the next camera on the wheel like you see in the original render, which I think was this wheel here. So, press shift A, camera, and then press come, come down here and press control B. And now we're on this camera. Let's move it out of the way so that we get the right shot of the wheel that we want. So I'm going to increase, no, decrease the focal length of this one to get the whole wheel in and everything. So this is looking pretty good. And if you go down to, go down to camera, viewport display and put pass out to 100%, you can actually see what you're actually going to see on the render. So to me, this looks pretty good. What we want to do now is we want to shift click this corner here. Sorry, shift A, add A empty plane axis and then bring it to wherever the camera was so I'm gonna go into wire wireframe so I can find the camera which was around here go back to solid view press G I'm gonna go back to material preview come up and you should be able to find the very end or the very start of the camera click on the camera and then click on add constraint copy location select the empty we used and now this follows the empty click on the empty click on the car with shift click Control p parent object now when the car moves the camera will stay here let's animate the car movement so we go forward a few frames let's just do so if we're at 24 fps we want to have like let's just say two seconds so if we go to about 148 let's just do 150 uh 150 and then move the car forward to about 
there, at least that's enough room to do the front of the car as well. So now we have the wheel here. It's not moving at the moment, but we can get that to move afterwards. Actually, let's do 140 LS frames. Lovely. Press M to add a marker at 140, and then this will be the very end of it. So we'll do the front of the car as well now. So let's add another one of those empties at the front. So shift click here, shift empty, bring it up a little bit, shift A, camera, and then we'll bind the camera. So add constraints, copy location, and then click on the empty that we just put in. It should be empty 001. And now if we go on the empty, we can move it around to get the camera right. So control B, sorry, select the camera, come down here, control B, click on the empty, go to camera, and then we're on the empty, right? Yeah, we're on the empty. And then let's position it so we get the grill of the car in. Got a bit of background in. We've got the whole grill of the car in. Looks pretty sweet. So we go into the rendered view a second, we'll have to see what it looks like. That looks pretty good to me. So always remember to save your work regularly, because otherwise, you know, you might lose it and that'd be very annoying. It's already happened to me twice during this video. If you noticed a cut in the video, that's where I've lost my work. <laughs> Anyways, click on the empty that we just got. I'm gonna go back onto this view. Click on the bonnet, so shift click that. Control P and parent object. And now that camera stays with the car as well. Go to 180, which is where we're gonna end up. Click on the top of the car. And then we'll move it forward to about there maybe. Press I, location, rotation. And now we've got the car movement at the front. Perfect. And now we're gonna do the wheels. So most car rigs actually move the wheels when you do it, but this one does not. So we're gonna to have to animate those separately. Make sure you clicked on the rig or click up here, control tab, press on all of the, these wheel ones where they're like a circle like that. And then we'll do the same on this one. Press I, location rotation, go to frame 60. You don't have to do these while I'm doing them, but I'm just doing it like this so that I know it definitely rotates. Properly. So you could go to the end and do this, but I'm just going to do it like this for now. So do all of the wheels. Make sure you have to rotate them this way because it will look like it's actually driving. No, that way, isn't it? That's reverse, so it has to be this way, yeah. I think I might have done this one wrong on the front here, actually. It goes forward, doesn't it, like that? Yeah, I messed that one up. So I select this wheel here. Let's just delete that keyframe and we'll move it forward like that. I think all the wheels are animated for this scene now. Let's just check. As you can see, we can't actually see the wheels in this scene here, so we don't need to animate them. You might as well save yourself some time. We definitely need to animate them for this scene though. So I'm only going to do this wheel because it's the only one in camera. So. I location rotation, go to the end of that scene with the camera in it, and then let's just rotate it around. So we go into the view here. Oh, it seems that I haven't animated the car properly moving, which is weird. So we'll just change that quickly. I thought I did change it, but clearly not. Go to the final frame. All right, there we go. I clearly forgot to press add the keyframe there, which is a bit weird. So to add a bit more extra, you know, a bit more realism to it, I like to have the car go over a bump every so often. So click on the rig, control tab, and I'm gonna keyframe the top part for this one. So we'll go to, actually, let's just do the wheel first. Click on the wheel one. And then if you press G to move, you can see that it goes up and down. So what to do here is if we go to about there, press I keyframe location, 
forward like four frames, bring it down a bit. Actually, I think it goes upwards when you go over, wait, you go over a bump, it goes down, yeah, so bring it down a little bit, copy the original keyframe, put it there so it goes boom, like that. We do the same for the front of the car, but make sure you have the top part selected. Press I to keyframe location, go forward a few frames, press G, Z, bring it down a little bit, I location rotation, control C, V, and then boom, you got the little bump there as well. It just adds a little bit more realism to the whole thing. And the final bit before we render, is so we go to 180 like that, Control S to save. I always save it with the solid preview here, because otherwise when you first open a project, if you've got all the textures loaded in, it might crash and be quite annoying. Now we want to do the cameras. So we've got all the cameras set up, but just before the render, to make it look nice, I always add a bit of depth of field on. So select the camera, if it lets me select it, come down to here, and now this is where you definitely have to have this on, otherwise you can't see. So if you put depth of field on, you can see it's quite blurry. So change the focal length distance for how you need it. So I'm going to have it to about 43 meters, keyframe it at the start of the scene, and then keyframe it at the end of the scene, so 160, 159. As you can see, it's still in focus, but sometimes it might not be, so I'm just going to change it so it's a bit more... 42 it shouldn't change that much you can always change the focal length down so it's a bit more blurry in the background so as you can see it's quite blurry so we want to put up the focal length a little bit make sure the car's in focus why is it not focusing okay so 78 meters with a 0 0.5 aperture make sure this is in focus And now if we go into this view here, the rendered view, we can see what it looks like with the, um, what's it called, sorry, the uh, depth of field on. So it doesn't look very blurry, so if we go the opposite way, it should get blurry. What's going on here? I have no idea what's happened. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty blurry. That should be pretty good. Okay, I like that. That looks pretty good. Let's move on to the next one now. So for this scene here, you could, if you wanted to, do depth of field on this object here. So like the leaves and then have the background quite blurry. So let me just do this quickly. You could have the leaves in focus or you could have the car in focus. So there's a way of doing this. So we have these ones out of focus here. Have this in focus and the car. Bring down this. That looks pretty good. So if you rendered that image now, so if I just rendered that image. So as we can see, the car is in focus and the leaves out of focus, which is perfect because you can see it looks really cool. Let's move on to our next camera. So for the wheel, the depth of field, you could have depth of field on for this camera. I'll have a look to see what it looks like. So if we put the wheel in focus, just the wheel for now. Lower the aperture. Lovely. And then the final one. Depth of field on. Focus length. So we want to make sure the car's in focus. Nice crisp crystal clear. A bit of background blur. Not too much so we can't see it. Maybe increase the focal length a little bit more. Not focal length, the distance, sorry. Is that a bit too blurry? Which way around is it? It's this way, isn't it, to make it lovely. So now that's all done. Um, I'll let that render. It'll probably take like seven hours or something ridiculous. And I'll put that on at the end of the video. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content.